It is Tuesday, September 27th, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. Producer Dan is along for the ride as well. Eight days remaining in the regular season. Can you can you believe it? Like, if you were eliminated, you played on some teams that checked out a little early, as in most of the time. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. What is it, what is it like with a week to go? Are guys like, God, can we finish this thing? Are you... What is it? It's a little bit of that. Some guys are trying to salvage their season. Some guys are just trying to hang on. You're trying to pack your stuff up, but but discreetly because you don't want to just have your duffels in the middle of the locker room with, you know, eight days left. You can't do that. But, yeah, basically you're just getting ready to go home, and, you know, you start to get a little bit excited because the offseason is nice. It's been a grind. You've been at, you've been at it for eight-plus months. Um so, like, home, if you don't live in the city that you play in, home sounds really nice at that time. And I think that's kind of where your head starts to go, and then you have to smack yourself a few times. So I had to do that a couple times where you got to, you know, wake up, finish the season strong, bro, because, you know, these this week could mean something, whether it's an arbitration yeah. or you, know, you have a spot left. So um, a lot of different emotions, but it's, it's not fun, Chris. It sucks. Yeah, it's funny. I used to, uh, on Best Damn, one of the football guys we had for a while was uh, DeMarco Farr. Great guy. He played for the Rams, helped him win Super Bowl 34. And he was on some shitty teams there outside of the Super Bowl club. It was like, we used to call game 16. That's what they used to play 16 games. He goes, in St. Louis, we called game 16 the U-Haul game because we all had a U-Haul trailer backed up to our car. We were out of there right afterward. So I imagine, God, after a, this long a season for you guys, you're ready to check out. But we don't check out here at baseball Mm-mm. today. We love baseball. We talk about it. Even if there are great races going on, there's a few. We'll sprinkle that into the conversation. But let's get it going with Aaron Judge and his continued pursuit of 61 homers. Uh, moved north to the border last night. Did not hit a home run up in Toronto. Uh, hasn't homered in a week now since he hit number 60 against the Pirates. If you were Aaron Boone, would you give him a day off just to kind of collect his thoughts? It. I wouldn't say he's been, I don't know if he's pressing or not, but he's got, I think he's got seven strikeouts and 18 at bats. Maybe a day off wouldn't be a terrible thing. Hell no, no chance. Do you give this guy a day off? What do you want people mad? I mean, Booney already has people mad at him, you know, at times in a season, he doesn't want to do this again. I think judges, the Yankees are off on Thursday, aren't they? Yes, they are. But he's not in New York right now. He's in Toronto. What does he give a shit if the fans in Toronto are mad at him? Because they people want Judge to break this record. They want him to hit a bunch of homers. So you can't – I don't think you can take a bats away from him now, especially with the off day coming up um, on Thursday. He had an off day on September 19th as well. And I am looking at his last seven games, you know, from September 20th uh, through today. Um, he has had some strikeouts. He's also had some walks. He still has a one-daughter OPS in that time. So, like – yeah. I just don't think you take a bats away from Judge right now. Um, and I don't think he'd want that either. I think if Judge, if Aaron came into Booney's office and was like, hey, I need a day, then sure. But there's no way Judge wants that. And again, they have an off day on Thursday. So I think you just let him ride it out. Like this this kind of streak will happen. Um, and it only takes one, one pitch, one good swing. And all of a sudden, 61 will come, 62 will come. Like this thing is going to happen. Uh, I think you just got to give him all the at-bats. I wouldn't give him an off day today. He's going against Jose Barrios. Uh, He has taken him deep in his career, and Barrios has given up 29 homers on the season, so he is susceptible to the long ball. Uh, I am curious if Judge was at 48 home runs right now or 44 home runs and not chasing the American League home run record, would he give him a day off? I don't know. I mean, he might. Also, the other thing to think of (laughs) – Let's say he doesn't get it tonight. I think he might get a day off tomorrow. Some managers like to give dudes in their 30s, I know he's just 30, a day off before a day off. So it gives them two full days where they're not thinking baseball, where they're just relax, they're good, and then it could give him a chance to get that magical 61 and beyond at home this weekend. You like that one? Oh, baby. I mean, maybe I don't. I don't see it happening. Okay, I don't see it happening. Just wanted to throw it out there. You think if he hits one tonight? What if he hits one tonight? Then he's definitely going to sit the next day. 
definitely off tomorrow. Yeah, yep. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I wonder if there's anybody in his ear, like from the Yankees front office, being like, we want this at home. We want those pictures. This We want that to be in our stadium. I guess hey, there we, we'll people, never know. There were people who were saying they should sit him during the Apple game so that yes could have it on Saturday. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. We're like commoditizing. What's the the right word for that? You're turning it into a commodity. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, basically. But there's a word for it. I don't know it. I'm a high school grad. But look, I mean, at the end of the day, it's baseball. And it's Judge and his body and his swing. And and, and like, I think that he'll let you know when he needs a day off. I don't think he wants it right now. I think you just got to let it play out. I don't think you can, I don't think you can play that game where you're trying to make it happen at home. I think you just got to let let it play out and see what happens. Do you need a day off? Because I can give you one if you need one. Commoditizing? That's right. It sounds like it's great. I've never used it in my life, but it sounds like it could be. Yeah. Why not? Okay, you know what? Even on. if it's not a word, let's just fucking go for it, man. Let's move on. Yeah. You're right. Uh, Philly, which currently holds the third wild card, plays all of its remaining games on the road, while the Brew Crew, which is just one and a half games out of the playoff chase, has all of its remaining schedule at home. How big a deal is that? Well, I would say it's a big deal, but Philly plays around five, I think right at 500 ball on the road. And if Philly, all they have to do, if they play 500 ball in these next 10 games, Milwaukee would have to go seven and two in their last nine games to win, to get into the playoffs. So, I mean, this is looking like it's a tall task for Milwaukee. Philly just needs to go tread water there. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, I, I thought this was going to be a closer race, but when you really start to break down the numbers in, in some of these instances, you know, one and a half seems like they're really close. But when you look at the numbers, like I said, five and five ball, play 500 ball for Philadelphia. And Milwaukee has to run off seven wins out of nine. It's going to be tough. So if it was closer, Chris, I would say maybe it, it lends itself to, you know, the home field advantage works for them. But, man, I mean, they're going to have to go on a real crazy run here to even have a chance. And if Philly just takes care of business and they go six and four, then Milwaukee can only lose one game. And it's just like it starts to add up like that. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think Milwaukee's got this thing. Excuse me, Philly, I think, has got this thing locked up unless they just absolutely nosedive right now. And, man. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I don't like seeing that at the end of the year. Could you imagine Philly fan if this team takes shit on the road to the playoffs? I mean, they have the longest playoff drought right now in the National League. I'm not rooting for it because I want to see Bryce Harper get in the playoffs. Um, yeah, Milwaukee has to beat Philly. It's not good enough to tie them because they lost. They lose the head-to-head tiebreaker. Yeah. Same with San Diego. So... I mean, once again, this is the time to play the schedule game, I suppose, if you're going to. But Milwaukee's got the tougher one out of the gate. They've got St. Louis at home for two. right now for a quick series. Then Miami and Arizona. Philly is at the Cubs and at Washington, two of the worst teams in the sport, and then at Houston. There you go. And, and, well, and Houston's by the way, the Astros, be, yeah. no, they're going to they're going to pitch their guys if they line up because, remember, they're going to have five or six days off before – meaningful baseball so if Verlander's in line if Fromber's in line they won't throw them eight innings but they might throw them five yeah a short a short outing quick leash on them short leash quick outing my words are all messed up today but I agree I mean it'd be if Philly lets this thing slide I don't know what's going to happen in Philadelphia <laughs> I don't know I I don't want to see that happen even though obviously I picked Milwaukee to win the World Series I think I think I'm more interested in seeing Philly do stuff in the playoffs. I do want to see Bryce Harper in there. I, I, I want to see these guys um, in that Philly lineup play in the playoffs. I do. I do too. I do too. And if they do advance past that first round, let's say they end up playing St. Louis and they beat him. I think it would be freaking awesome to see that place in, uh, you know, they would take down either the Mets or the Braves, right? Mm-hmm. And then the way it would go. Yeah. The three, six matchup. Takes on the two seed. Don't get I'm, me started I'm, on that. I'm started to I'm starting to worry about this wild card series. And I feel like, you know, we want to give the top two teams an advantage somehow. But 
having to throw your top three pitchers before you enter the series, like at least your top two guys and then go into the series. That's, that's like a massive advantage. And I think we're going to really see that. I mean, I know we've talked about it before um, and we've touched upon it, but when we get to these series and these guys are gassed from a three game wild card set, three games in a row, like I said, burning your top three starters, and the other teams just there lined up to go, I think we're going to see just how big of an advantage it is. Then go be one of the top two teams in your league. I go play guess. better. But by the way, I don't think it's going to be as big a deal in the starting rotation as you think. I think the area where it's going to show is the bullpen. Three days in a row, then there's one travel day, then we get back on. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's all going to be, I guess, how these games go. If you'll go handle your series, your wildcard series easily, then sure, it'll be less good. of a advantage for the other team but if there's if it's a tough three game set you know maybe we get an extra innings game maybe you know like things happen and they're right man the pitching could go quickly in those three games could go quickly no question no question all right now word from our sponsor a better help um it's interesting because i've gone to therapy for a long time ever since i was a little kid And I think when I was growing up in the 70s and the 80s, if you talked about mental health, you never used the expression mental health. You just didn't. You know, people were like, oh, you're going to see a doctor? Like, what what does that mean for your... Well, things have totally changed. We've heard it in the sports world. How many players have we seen, you know, they're like, I'm working on my mental health. And people don't, they don't wrinkle their eyebrows at them. They don't go, oh, really? They go, yeah, that's a big deal. Because, like, when you screw up your knee, what do you do? You go to an orthopedist. You don't try and bandage it up yourself. So if something's going on and you're not feeling right, you feel a little off emotionally or mentally, go get help. Go see a therapist. It is not only okay. It is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. And I think that it's something I know I believe in. Uh, Trevor, I know that you talked about it when you were just starting out in baseball, you didn't believe in talking to other people, but I know that these days it's okay to talk to somebody when you need help, right? Yeah, no, I mean, we didn't really have people to help at the beginning of my baseball career. Then towards the end, when we started to bring guys in, it was, it was like, you looked upon, it was looked upon in a, in a matter that now is not there. Like if you go see that coach, it's like going to see your hitting coach. And before it wasn't like that. And I like the way it is now because whether you're playing baseball or whether you're just dealing with life, there are times where I think you need some help with that. And that's like breaking the stigma. I know that's a common phrase used, but that is exactly what needs to be done. Yep. No question. So here's the deal with better help. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, We suggest that it is a great option. It is convenient. It's accessible. It's affordable. It's entirely online. You're going to get matched up with a therapist after filling out a brief survey. And here's the beautiful thing. If that relationship's not working after a session or two, and you're like, yeah, don't say I'm done. Just say, I'd like to switch therapist. There's no harm, no foul here. Uh, We want to help you get started here. It's betterhelp.com slash baseball today. You're going to get 10% off of your first month. That is better, H-E-L-P dot com slash baseball today. Once again, if you need somebody to talk to, BetterHelp is there for you. It's really, really important that you go take care of yourself. Or as my man, Marshawn Lynch, said, your mentals. 100%. We continue on here with baseball today. Baltimore, a winner in Boston. Three and a half back of slumping Seattle for that final wild card berth. Are you interested yet? No, for the same reasons. I'm like the whole (laughs) Philadelphia and Milwaukee thing. It's even worse for Baltimore. Like it looks cute, like three and a half games and we got some time left, but like Seattle would have to completely fall on their face flat and lose pretty much every single game for this to happen. And I just don't think that's the type of team they are. I know they're banged up right now. I'm happy that Baltimore has stayed in the race as long as they have, but it's the, the math is just not in their favor. It really isn't. Um, but, you know, Chris, crazy things happen at the end of the season. We've seen it before. I just think that it might be a little bit too little, too late uh, for the birds there. And it's and it's, it's nothing against their season and, and the team and what they've done this year. It's just no. that's how baseball is, man. Yeah, they hit a little skid about three weeks ago that was going to be the determining factor as to whether or not they were going to be within a game or two. 
the only way I really get interested, and once again, Seattle has the tiebreaker over the Oaks. Yes. So it's not just catching them. It's leapfrogging them. That's the key. That's a exactly. huge, huge part of this equation now. Um, it's not going to happen. I want to see it. God, I'm rooting for it. I would love to see it come down to those final few days. Like a week from today, I would love to see Baltimore be a game back with two to play. And then all of a sudden, Baltimore wins two straight. If Seattle lose two in a row, we have one of the greatest finishes we've ever seen. It's just not going to happen. Baltimore would have to be perfect, essentially. Oh, yeah. Baltimore's good. That's the thing. Teams like Baltimore and Milwaukee have to play every game right now like it's the playoffs. Like, if they're in a high-leverage situation in the sixth inning, you can't play it like it's a normal game in July where you're like, ah, you know what? You might bring in Batista in the sixth inning. Like, if the bases are loaded and there's two outs and the other team's got their best hitter up, you might do that. You might say, well, fuck it. We got to take care of business right here. That's the, that's the only thing that'll make it interesting, I think, over the next couple of days. Now, if I, I like that. Them, I mean, yeah, it's – um, like I said, they have to be perfect. And, and, they, and they will manage that way, and, and they'll put the players in the right positions. But at the end of the day, again, like unless Philadelphia and Seattle just go out there and lose pretty much every single game to go, nine games, they're going to be in the playoffs. I think right now – yeah. Um, Philly has an 80% chance to be in the playoffs and let's see Seattle's. I bet it's even higher than that. I'm assuming 98.3% chance. Oh my God. Hey, so, you know, my Browns, my Browns had a 99.9% chance of beating the jets in week two and they lost. There you go. (laughs) Yeah. Ask anyone from Cleveland. It happens. (laughs) It happens. It happens. All right, besides Aaron Judge going for the triple crown in the AL, what statistical race are you most interested in? So anything having to deal with numbers right now? Yeah, you know, I was kind of perusing the stats, and I forget, it might be Jim Jin Herta has brought this up to us a few different times. He talks about the Freddie Freeman and Trey Turner race. Don't but go I'm gonna that go a little, direction. I'm going to go a little bit different direction. I just want to see if anyone can get to 200 hits. Freddie's the, really the only one. He's, I think he's nine hits away from it. Were you going to do that too? Dude, out of all the numbers in baseball, we picked the same one. It's interesting to me because I really respect like 200 hits Like was a very, I mean, if you got 200 hits, Number. it was, you were a guy and it just doesn't happen much anymore. I think um, right. I keep looking back here in 2000. It hasn't happened since 2019 when uh, Merrifield Endeavors did it. Didn't happen in 2018, 2017. I got it up. I was looking, Altuve. and it did happen. Blackman, Altuve, Enciarte, and and uh, D. Gordon all did it. Ender Enciarte did it. Yeah, 201 hits. So like it, it it happens, but it doesn't happen that often. And when and like four guys doing 200 hits is is an anomaly. We just don't see it too much anymore. So I, I think that's a cool number. And yeah, Freddie's close. He's 191 right now. I think Trey Turner has 184. So he's kind of uh, back there but it could happen yeah it, the reason i picked that number was because well freeman has tied his career high in hits right now at, at 191 and i want to see him get 200 because it helped it made me think a little bit more about the future right last year or was it it was earlier this year we saw miguel cabrera get 3,000 hits and at the time we discussed well you know who's who's going to be the next one altuve actually has more hits than freeman But if Freeman gets to 200 this year, he's going to be at right around 1,900. He just turned 33 earlier this month. He's got a healthy baseball body, as you guys like to say. So if he averages 150 hits over the next seven years, that's 1,050 hits. That puts him right on the precipice of 3,000 hits at age 40. I think he can do it. Yeah. I think think he can do it because there's going to be a couple years he's going to get 185 hits. There might be a year he gets 130 hits, you know, as he kind of creeps up in age and they give him some days off and hopefully he stays healthy, but he might be banged up somewhere. So I'm just trying to think like future. Hmm. I I like that. And Freddie needs to start stacking these big numbers. Like you're saying, like, you know, to average 150, well, let's, let's get a couple seasons, 190 going like you did this year. And I think I, I like the projection to 3000. That's good. We should keep a, we should keep track of that. Well, how about let's do this in the business. We like to say, let's mark the tape. 
What are the odds we still have baseball today, seven years from now, and we can bring back this clip? Pretty good. I mean. You think so? Yeah. What are you going to do? You have nothing else to do. Me neither. Actually, you have a lot of stuff to do. No, no, no. I wonder what I'm going to look like in seven years. My God. I might be the president You're going to have teenagers. You're going to have teenagers. You can't be the president. Why not? I'm old enough now. I know. There's way too much baggage there. Oh, you think they dig back into my past? I'm the cleanest guy in baseball. Do I think? Do I think? They're going to be like, dang, that guy's squeaky clean. Louisville High School. I went to an all-boys school. <laughs> I know. You have girls at my school. I know. Enough I learned said. how to play hacky sack but- because of that. I'm thankful. Uh, we haven't talked much about the Pirates, but there was an interesting scene last night in their arena their stadium their ballpark family of four two brothers one took a baseball from the other (laughs) i'll let the story take over from here national league all-star david bednar he saw what happened here and he saw you crying so you know what he did he grabbed two baseballs Uh, and he signed them for you guys so there's the sign of david bednar whoa how cool is that no way what did you say on the way here i was hoping for Sign ball from who? David Bednar. Oh Wait, my are you serious? Did he really say that on the way here? I hope David Bednar's there. I want to try to get an autograph. I said I don't even know if he's here. Tip of the cap, David it. Bednar. Here's the only thing I would have done differently. I would have signed one for the the kid that took the baseball. Said, "Don't steal from your brother, David <laughs> Bednar." That way, he has to. You know, there will always be a story to tell. You know, when the the kid will end up being 35 and, hey, look at this autographed baseball from former (laughs) Pirates all-star closer David Bednar. Why does it say don't steal from your brother? And then you have to own up to it. (laughs) I guess that's good. I was about to say, no, you can't do that, Chris. Like as a as a parent that has two kids around the same age, like when they one gets something, the other has to get it, too. But later on in life, I think that would be a good story. But. I love uh, Robbie. That's my guy, the reporter there, Robbie and Smikowski out in there yeah, uh, in be, Pittsburgh. Yeah, Minnesota, Finding right? Finding the good stories. And Bednar, we talk about this all the time on this show, man. Little simple gestures like that go so far. I mean, the kid's not going to ever forget that, even if he didn't inscribe it with that inscription. Um, good job, David Bednar. It's, I, I think they're like from the same town, too. Yes, that's what he said. So yeah, like, they were there the to see area. him. They, yeah, they were there to see him, and he made their their day, their week, their year, man. It's pretty cool. Yeah, great. Like I said, just take it a step further. Make that kid own it. I also yeah. want to say, because there is a video in, in the same light here, there's a video going on uh, the internet right now about Mike Trout passing up some kids asking for yeah. his autograph outside the hotel room. It makes Trout seem like he just shoot off some kids. Right. That's not the case, people. Okay, like a lot of the times when you're at your hotel, number one, I don't even like to sign outside the hotel, dude. Like if you want to get me at the park, great. What happens is you'll have these adults behind the kids and the adults use the kids to get autographs. Mm -hmm. And like they try to make you feel bad. And that's exactly kind of what happened here. I know Trout signs all the time. All the time. All the time for people. And in this one instance when he's, running out of the hotel and you got the parents behind the kids and the kids are asking, is that him? Is that him? Those autographs aren't for the kids. Do you know what I mean? So let's not, let's not bag on trout for this. He's a very good dude who does sign a lot. And just because a video was framed of him looking bad, doesn't make him a bad guy. On top of that. um, It's the dangers of social media. We can't judge life on two or three second clips because there's usually a lack of context. If there's any of the morning shows out there, the yelling and screaming morning shows, as I like to call them, that have been very successful, that's fine. Uh, I don't begrudge people. But if they air that and then make a comment about it without knowing what's going on, that's irresponsible. Let's all just take a step back. If somebody wants to ask Mike Trout about it, they got to ask Mike Trout about it. I don't think it's a big enough deal to ask him. And by the way, if he did blow some kids off, you're entitled to have bad days too. Yeah. You're a human being. We don't know what's going on in his life. People say he's got four to $26 million. He plays baseball for a living. How bad could his life be? Yo, 
You never know. So let's not be irrational about something that we see for two or three seconds. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. And you could hit with these guys with these binders that have 50 cards oh, and they want you to sign 10 horrible. of them. Like, dude, like, you know, that's not what this is about, man. And the same guys come back every day too. Yeah, and, and, and players know that players know, like we recognize faces. We know who's there every single day. Yep. I would tell those guys, say, hey, I'll sign one for you today. You know, so if you, if you want, mul- for some reason, you wanted multiple of my autographs, you had to work for it. Uh, but kids, I'm all about if it's the right thing. If they're at the ballpark and like, you know, they're generally interested, you know, and it's not just them going up, doing it for their parents. That happens a right. lot. Yep. Uh, quickly, what do you have on John Boy Media? Uh, we had the Monday episode of Talking Baseball out. Uh, Jake and I had a great time together. We're going to be recording the midweek episode right after this. Talk about a bunch of topics. But, man, we're, like, ready for the playoffs. Like, this this time in the baseball season, too. there's a few good races left. But I'm ready for the playoffs, man. So, what you got? Latest episode of the Rose Rotation with Ryan Stanek of the Houston Astros is out. Uh, enjoy that. He's funny. He's got a really kind of a good uh, good fever on life. I like it. I dig it. Um, tomorrow, busy day. I'm taping two episodes, one with Miguel Rojas. I'm not sure we can get that out in time on Thursday. It'll probably drop Friday. And then I'm also taping one with Justin Turner that'll air early next week. So we'll get a Dodger on the show, which I always like. Wow. Big JT. That's a big guest. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Wait, why are you Um, wearing your Dodger hat? I was wearing it for the Freddie Freeman story. Okay. You have to explain why you wear your hats for everyone. You're right. Uh, Yeah. I messed it up. By the way, nobody has to comment in the section about my bill bending. I know it's the worst thing ever. I even asked like Wayne Wright about it on the Rose Rotation. I have the worst bend bill, uh, bending ability in the history of the world. I get, I know it sucks. I mean, you can say it in the comments. It's fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings or anything, but I understand it. I hear you. Okay. Um, Chris, oh, one other thing on John Boyd. Go. What? You go. What? Uh, we started the Crits Ball Tournament. The combination of cricket and blitz ball, we released it yesterday with legendary cricket player Darren Sammy out of the West Indies. He was the captain of their World Cup team, an awesome dude. He joined me in the broadcast booth. People loved it. If you have not seen it and you loved blitz ball and you don't know nothing about cricket, please watch. We release them every day this week at 6 o'clock Eastern. It is a phenomenal watch. It is fun. I'm learning the game as I broadcast it. And to watch these guys dive in and like watch what Jimmy's brother, Luke O'Brien did in the first episode. If you didn't see it, go pick it up on our YouTube channel from yesterday. Watch the play he made. Freaking awesome. Now you may go. Lucas. Lucas made a nice play. Wow. He's very unathletic. So I never really imagined him making nice plays. Stop it. Um, I like the bill, the, the way you bend it. I don't want some like oh. curvy, super pre-curved bill like this. Like that's not who we are, bro. Like you and I need to show our face a little bit. So we get a little flatter. You can get a little crease in the middle. Like, look, we're good. Yeah. Good. All right. Fair enough. Uh, for producer Dan and for Trevor Ploop, I'm Chris Rose. We will see you hump day on baseball today.